My name is Joshua Purcell and my next project is this coffee table for our living room. Stick around and check out how we make this. Today, my next project is going to be a coffee table for my house or our house. And I'm going to do something I haven't done in a long time, and that's going to be, I don't have plans for this. I'm just going to kind of come into the shop and wing it. I got a picture of what my wife wants, and I'm going to try to see if I can replicate that picture. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a picture on the screen right now. But I'm just going to try to replicate this uh, coffee table to the best uh, that I can. I'm starting off here by rough cutting these at 49 inches long. I'll cut them the final length once they're glued together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I've, I've set my fence up to cut off probably about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to end up cutting these down to about four and a skinny 13 16 which means just a hair less than 13 16 that's so I can get to my 24 inches wide for these five boards. But like I said, I'm going to cut off about an eighth of an inch. And then after I cut off of all five boards, I'll move my fence over it once and then cut them again. This will get two straight edges on these boards and will allow to get a good joint when I glue them up. I haven't committed to planing them yet, but I most likely will just to make sure they're all the same thickness. Flip these boards around, I move my fence, now let's go on and cut these for the final width. I'm gonna biscuit join these together, you know, so uh, I got them all laid out where I want them to go, so I'll just simply, I'm gonna put five biscuits per joint. Shouldn't be, that should be more than enough. These big glue ups are not necessarily the most fun, but it shouldn't be too bad. You should be able to get these done without too much trouble. That's what we're hoping for today is a smooth glue up. I like to always stick some glue down in my biscuit joint sections first. Maybe let it soak to the bottom. So I've been milling up all my lumber and I'm just about done. I, you know, I, I cut these to final length on the uh, miter saw, came over here and did the same thing I did on the top, trimmed off about an eighth of an inch and flipped it over cut it to the final width, which for all these pieces is actually going to be five inches. I don't think you'll be able to tell looking at the table that they're not the same width, especially since there won't be any that line up together. For the top, how I'm going to attach the top and the shelf. So I'm going to try to cut a dado in these, on the, these boards here. So I've already cut one edge to make it square. Here, cut about an eighth of an inch off. I'm going to cut the top piece of the table uh, two inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and go cut that now at the table saw. Cut it two inches wide. That'll leave me 
a little over three inches left on the bottom piece and I'm just going to work with whatever amount is left on that. And now these will be able to run along the bottom and the shelf will just attach right to this, sit right in this little groove here. So the end of these, as you can saw on the thumbnail, is gonna have this X on the ends. So I gotta notch these pieces out in order to make them fit flush. So what I did is I cut this piece of, two, uh, this piece of plywood from uh, a scrap. It's the same width as my router base from the edge to the, this edge of the blade, I mean of the bit. So I'm gonna put it right here and use it as a spacer and then I'm gonna come back with another piece and I'll put it right there and this one I'll clamp down and I'm hoping that right there will cut my groove where I need it at. So now I'm gonna get my router and try it. Now we're gonna to go to the other side and try it and see how it does. So you can see I have the X in here. These big shots like this are not exactly easy to shoot. I'm gonna do the best I can. What I got here is I got a board clamped up to hold this top rail in place. On both sides I got a clamp here in the middle that I'm gonna use to tighten it here in just a minute. But first I need to go ahead and add some glue to my rail, both sides. Now I need to turn this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Alright, now we need to putty this, sand it, and let it then get it ready for paint. I will probably paint this off camera. Hopefully you guys remember because you saw it just a couple minutes ago, but I cut that little dado or uh, lip or whatever you want to call it on the bottom of the rails for the coffee table. I'm going to cut that same dado on the, on the part that's going to go on the bottom, the bottom shelf. I'm going to do that on each side of these pieces now before I glue them up. So let's get over here and do that real quick.
I do not think that this is necessary to do pocket holes and biscuits. The biscuits will be good because it'll help me keep the boards lined up so I get a flat top. The reason why I'm doing it is for one reason, that re for that reason, and because I am trying to finish this project before the weekend is over. And so since time is a factor on my side, this will allow me not to have to clamp it and I can go ahead and screw it together and let the glue dry while I'm continuing on working with probably this piece and some other ones. So we're done sanding. I'm gonna go ahead and take my jacket off. You can see how dusty it is from all the sanding. I'm sweaty too. But take this off. I can tell you, sanding in this little jacket and making all my cuts has been so nice having that there to do. So now I'm just gonna get uh, my brush, put some gloves on, and start going to town on uh, staining this. We're using a different stain that I've never used before. This is called a, a Jago Bean 2750 by Minwax, hashtag not a sponsor. I temporarily have the fans off, the door closed just strictly for lighting. I'm using, here's what I'm using, clear satin. And I think this will be good. If it's not good, I can save it off and retry it to see how that looks. What I decided to do here is uh, to use my pocket hole drill bit and drill holes in the top as you can see here. And then after this I'll come back and attach this top with pocket hole screws. I feel like this will give me the best uh, secure to the top and it makes it where I can take it off later if I need to. And for this bottom shelf I've decided that we're just going to let it sit in here. We're not gonna actually secure it down. So it'll just drop in there just like that. And that is gonna complete this little guy. So the coffee table is finished and this thing turned out great. I'm very happy with how it looks. The dark stain and the white offset really helps it balance and really makes this this whole uh, coffee table pop and it looks it's gonna look great in our living room once we get it moved in there. Thank you guys for checking out another one of my videos. If this happens to be your first video, click that subscribe button so you'll see more videos like this I have coming out. Also, you can find me on Instagram. I post pictures there occasionally and uh, you can find more information about me there. And also check out my website, my next projects with an S on the end of that, dot com and you can find plans and pictures and uh, just other things there. I don't have plans for this because like I said at the beginning of the video, I just came out here on a whim to make this and just kind of throw it together. Thanks again for watching and as always, y'all will see me next time.